Yo, what up, you cats? My Hairscape20 here, and today I have a different video uh, for you guys that I'm normally uh, not used to posting. So, um, for those of you that have followed me through um, the beginning of my channel, um, you know that I started this channel uh, through a game called Heroescape. You know, hence the name My Heroescape20. Um, Heroescape is a board game. Uh, that requires um, a lot of thinking and planning out of moves um, if you end up playing the uh, master game mode or the advanced mode. Um, speaking of advanced mode, hey Charlie. Um, so basically what I wanted to do in this video is break down this map that I built and uh, I actually had a, um, I guess a match or a battle uh, with uh, two other or three other friends um, and we all played on this map and I was going to give kind of like a detailed guide of of kind of what happened so um, stay tuned for that that'll be towards the end of the video but for those of you that just kind of want to see the map I'm gonna go ahead and explain what what all I did on this map so let's go ahead and start off with um, spawn points and initial thoughts and uh, and kind of glyph placements and all that so um, initially spawn points were going to be on this side and over there but um, that was for 4v4 or I'm sorry uh, four players and um, we we're going to do a free-for-all so spawn point would be here here uh, back over there and there um, instead though we decided to do a 2v2 match which uh, we'd be on a team uh, except for we would have um, we would just uh, continually trade off turns, um, and I'll explain that later on in the video, but this part is more about the map. Um, so, alright, so first thing, so instead of spawning over there, we actually decide to break it up, like as in someone, we spawn on this side of the map, and we spawn over here. And cutoff points were actually, uh, you can't go past this line right here, and then the other side, they were not able to spawn past that this line right there um and so yeah so let me just go ahead and talk a little bit about glyph placement so um right now they're all flipped up but that's because we already played a match um and i wanted to show but mostly they're all face down uh, my team actually spawned over there and the opposing team spawned here um, so let's go ahead and talk a little about glyphs. So glyph placements, we try to make them in the center of the board as possible. Make it to where we're not just sitting back camping in our castles. And make it to where if you want the bonuses and you want the glyphs, you need to be playing aggressive. Um, so unfortunately, on we'll go ahead and just start on my side. Uh, when we spawned in, uh, first thing we got is this glyph right here. Um, glyph of Gerda, which actually just gives you defense plus one. And then, unfortunately, we got the, uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but we got the pit trap, which means you can't move out of it unless a adjacent ally allows you to, uh, you know, rescue you. Um, right, this glyph right here is attack plus one, defense plus two, move plus two, and range plus four to all people that have uh, range of four or more. Uh, and that, that glyph actually really ended up... Um, hurting our team. Uh, the opposing team quickly got the range glyph and was able to sit on the castle and pick off everybody that was uh, advancing through the tundra um, as well as they were able to grab the defense plus two um, which stopped our push on the right side. Um, they eventually came and uh, well, once they got the move plus two we actually had uh, Savaris here and um, I will explain that uh, later, but um, we were able to pick off people in that manner. So um, what I try to do on this map mostly, though, is make it as balanced as possible, and I'll kind of get a closer closer view. What are you doing? Um, and so I'll just give a little bit of close map so you can see. So Mara Hive, if the opposing team decided to do it, which they actually end up taking the Hive, it would spawn right here. Um, uh, unfortunately, the outpost was never used, but that was mostly because we lost this quickly, and the advancing troops were either melee or uh, two two based figures on the opposing team. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what the map I built right now is. Uh, I actually incorporated the Marvel set as well for the castle walls, um, just to kind of mix things up, and we allowed movement from here to here. So they were able to jump just like we were able to walk across. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much what the map looks like. 
If you guys have any questions or anything, leave comments below. Unfortunately, nobody ended up going under the bridge or we lost the uh, we lost the side pretty hard, so we weren't able to take advantage of these runes over here to attack the castle. Um, I also made it to where you know when you go on ice, you have a movement plus one. So if you have movement plus four, it would just be be like one, two, three, four instead of just the normal one, two, three, four. Um, and then I made it here to where this would actually take almost a full turn to get up. So it'd be like one, two, three, four, five, depending on your movements. And uh, flying didn't have a problem; they could just easily get up there. Um, but yeah, so that's this is the map, and hopefully you guys enjoy this, and stay tuned for the battle report. Hey guys, welcome to the uh, battle report portion of this video. Um, so what I want to do in this in this part is just kind of go over how the uh, how the battle went, and uh, some things that maybe could have improved. I also want to go over some runes that we used, as well as our uh, draft order. Um, and kind of what we were thinking throughout. So let's just go ahead and dive on on in. So um, this was the first match that I've played. Uh, I mean, not not ever, but I mean just in the series, I guess, that I'm going to be doing. Um, and so there was four players. Um, we decided instead of doing free-for-all, we decided to do a 2v2 match. Um, and as well as we decided to break it up in this order. Um, this is me right here, Chase, and I was on a team with Nathan against uh, my friends Travis and Josh. Um, spoiler alert, the winner was actually Team 2, and we forfeited. Um, it wasn't one of those things where we just forfeited throughout the match. It was, um, we played the match pretty much entirely. Um, at this point, we were playing for like four or five hours, and it was pretty grim for my team. Uh, we definitely had them early on, but towards the end, uh, it was pretty obvious that we, we weren't going to win. So we just decided to go ahead and forfeit, um, just for the sake of everybody in time. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about army draft. So army draft, what we did is we had a cost of 900 points per team. Um, if you're not understanding what that is, for those of you that um, have played or have not played, there is a basic mode and then there is a um, advanced mode. And at the bottom of the card, um, you will see a point value for each unit or each squad or each hero right um and so the total adds up to be 900 or as close as you can get you can't go over but you can always go under um so that's how we that's what we decided to do we were going to do a little bit more but since we decided to do 2v2 we wanted to keep it high enough where we can have a strategic uh composition but not too large where we're just picking things for for no reason um and so team two, we rolled to go first, a 20-sided die, and team two actually got to pick first. Um, so that's what we did. So team two first picked Major Q9. Uh, Major Q9 is a hero worth 180 points, and their strategy on that was basically to use their, uh, their special power, which uh, is very useful, um, and I'll show that on screen. Um, we decided to go with Savars first, mainly due to the long range. Um, next, they decided to go with the Shalon Monks, um, which was a squad, and we responded with Sergeant Drake Alexander. Uh, the second Master Set Edition, not the first one. Um, at any point, if you guys want to go ahead and look at these cards, just go ahead and pause the video. I'll have them up. Um, that way you can you know read them and see what they do and maybe understand why we did it a little bit. Um, Next thing they did is Rylan the Kyrie Warrior, and the reason they picked that is due to the defense aura. Um, anyone within four, I believe it's anyone within four reign. I, I can't remember exactly the card. You'll, you'll see it on uh, on the screen. But anyone that is in line of sight of her, basically, I think within four range, um, gets a defense aura, so of plus two, I believe. Um, so we end up responding. So we were kind of debating earlier on around maybe round two to pick up a support we didn't realize they were going to pick one up so early so we decided to respond with a uh the Kyrie warrior which is actually or kelda um which is actually instead of a defense aura she actually specializes in healing so instead of the uh for taking wound markers and stuff on your life you actually just remove those wound markers depending on your role um, we got really lucky during the game and rolled a 20 which removes all wound markers and uh and I'll tell you who we did that on a little bit later on. Um, they decided to do the uh, Samurai from the first Master Set. And this is really nice. Their idea was um, we're going to go ahead and 
and counter your melee, the adjacent uh, opponents, and make it to where we have a chance to pretty much do uh, unblockable damage, which will pretty much kill any squads or do a lot of damage to heroes. Um, the problem with them is they didn't they didn't know that we planned on not having that much uh, melee due to their current picks. We wanted to pick them off at range. Um, so we decided to do Taylor the Kyrie Warrior, which is um, the special thing about him is he has an attack aura, and uh, he, I believe he gives plus one attack to um, anyone within four as well. I don't remember exactly 100% the range. I'll, like I said, I'll put it up on screen so you guys can see. Um, but that was our idea. Um, they decided to go with Memory, the, the dragon from the first master set. And uh, this was this turned out not to be that useful for them because we took them out early, early on um, with our people we actually responded with, which is Minions of Utgar. These guys are really good, especially... Um, with Taylor the Kyrie Warrior, one of their abilities is instead of taking a turn with them, uh, you can take a, a turn with any Kyrie Warrior under Utgar. Now, Utgar is the red team, uh, and Taylor actually fits under that. So, um, another th good thing about them that we decide to do is because every time they roll an attack. Um, when, when you're attacking, whenever you roll a skull, it counts as two. And we were able to shred memory with that, and it worked out very nicely. Um, they decided to re, um, change their strategy a little bit throughout, and they started picking Mara Warriors from the first Master Set. Um, this this actually turned out to be really nice for them. Uh, we responded with Zedian Guards for a little bit of range. Um, these things actually didn't do us that well. They have really good defense, are able to stay alive a long time, but... They don't really have any good, like, they have, like, two attack, and uh, you have to be attacking the same people for it to be useful, and which is nice, but at the same time, like, we didn't really get use out of them, even on elevation. Uh, they decided to go with the Anubian Wolves. Um, we decided to respond, and I think it's Sudema, um, so, and I'll go ahead and I'll show you what that is, but basically the reason we picked this person is we noticed that they had one, two three four uh squads and this is a squad killer um it's also really good at taking down uh hero uh heroes but the reason it's so good at squads is you on the 20 sided die you only have to roll a 20 or i mean i'm sorry a seven or higher which is really easy to do um really good odds and you can instantly shred within four four units uh four spaces away uh normally she has an attack range of one so this gives her that um, added power where she could uh, kill many squads but the problem with that is we lost her very 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 early on and I think that kind of hurt us a little bit um, alright and then they decided to go with the Mara Hive um, we noticed once they picked the Mara Hive and we saw that they already picked the Warriors we knew that they were going to start picking some Mara so um, we're really glad that we picked uh, this person but we decided to go with uh, Terracus and uh, the reason we went with this person is uh, mainly so we could transport. She has, uh, he has, oh, I guess the pony. Uh, I guess it's a pony. I don't really know what it is. Um, but basically, you can transport things uh, around. So we planned on keeping Savaris safe, um, maybe uh, in, like Sudema. We, we just planned on moving things back and forth, carrying it. Maybe we were going to quickly attack the Mara Hive, get that out of the game. Um, unfortunately, we we're not able to do that. Um, so around round 10, they pick the Morrow Drones, um, which is a squad worth 50 points. And those things were they're not bad. They, they, actually, um, they didn't actually have a high impact, but we weren't able to kill them. So their impact was wasting a lot of time, but they weren't actually able to kill anything, really. Um, at this point, we were out of points. We reached our max points. And I, I think this is where it kind of messed us out because they had two turns to get stuff. Um, you can see early on we had one, two, three, four, five or six heroes and uh, one, two, two squads. So that that ended up kind of hurting us a bit. Uh, around ten, they picked the uh, ninja, and this thing didn't really do anything. It was kind of placed on the board early on, out of position, and really never did anything. The final thing that it did is. Uh, it really just kind of like was a glyph holder, and I'll get onto those a little bit later, but it just basically sat on a glyph all game. Uh, we decided to, just because of nostalgia, we decided to go with two Marvel heroes each, and we didn't decide to include the points in our total 900 point uh, pool. 
this was a bad, bad, bad idea. The Marvel heroes are way stronger than the uh, basic hero set, as well as all the wave expansions, as well as the large expansions. So, so it was a really bad idea picking these, but it kind of was fun at first, and then once we realized like how OP they were, it it uh, it just was bad. Incredible Hulk was able to leap across the field and quickly take down um, our pick at round seven, um, and was just able to stomp everything. And the problem with the Hulk is that. The more damage it has on her, the more wounds. I don't know why I said her, but the more wounds that it has, the more damage it deals, and that was a huge issue. But luckily, we were able to uh, have good RNG and just uh, just kill it. Um, we picked the Abomination to kind of try to match it, but it just didn't have the same threat. Um, they responded with Thanos, and the problem with Thanos is uh, the, okay, not the problem with Thanos, but the problem with Thanos for us is it had an ability which. Even if it died, it could come back to life, and that that was a pretty big, uh, pretty big problem. Um, also, we decided to go with Silver Surfer just because you can kind of jump in, attack, and jump out. So we decided that it would be pretty safe to do that, um, especially that since it could fly as well. So elevation wasn't an issue. Um, even though it didn't really kill anything, that was that was the biggest problem. It it, it did like it stalled and. But overall, it didn't really kill much. Um, our MVP were the minions of Utgar um, in round 5 because uh, we were able to kill Memring and stall a lot of time uh, with those. And their MVP was the Mara Hive because, um, one, we weren't able to kill it, and two, it was just constantly respawning the Mara that we destroyed. And that, that was a pretty big problem. Uh, also, a Mara, the Mara Hive has an ability where if you pick the Mara Hive as your, uh, like, um... I guess as your turn, you can move with any other Morrow within uh, visibility. Um, and, I, and there might be a range in that, but uh, pretty much within visibility. So uh, so that was that was the big thing for them. All right, let's go on to runes. And I just realized I actually forgot one. Um, and I'll go ahead and I'll put it on the screen after I go through after here. But uh, I'll explain what that one is in a bit. We decided to use a total of, and that is twice. What the heck? Uh, that was a total. We used a total of seven runes. Um, the first one was the Glyph of Astro, um, which is a permanent rune, which means all you have to do is have a figure for basically as long as the um, figure is on the Glyph, it has effect for your team. So basically, um, we got lucky and we had our figure on this and had attack plus one for a good portion of the game. Uh, unfortunately, the Glyph of Proftica was the pit trap, and what this does is you have to rescue. So you so if a unit is trapped in the uh, pit trap then you have to have someone come over adjacent to it to rescue it out and it was in a bad spot so we just kind of left uh left it unfortunately uh, sergeant drake alexander was the one to be trapped and it was one of those things where we just kind of left him nice thing about him is that he can't be attacked by range only adjacent things so people had to come up to him to kill him which if i were them i wouldn't have even wasted my time on that it was so out of the way i would have definitely uh done it in a different position um, the Glyph of Ivor, range plus four to all units that uh, have a, wait, let's see, for each figure you control with the range number of four or more, add four to the range. So imagine if Savaris got it with the range of nine, he'd have 13 range, which is which is insane. Um, unfortunately for us, they were using it with the Mario Warriors, which were able to snipe a lot of our stuff. Uh, the Glyph of Jalgard, which um, has defense plus two. Again, these are permanent. Uh, all of these are permanent glyphs. Um, glyph of Gerda, which is defense plus one, um, and then the glyph of Valda, which is move plus two. Um, and so the final thing that we did, which I don't have included here, um, but I'll go ahead and I'll show you on the screen. It was a revive glyph. So whenever someone um, stands on this glyph or whenever it's found, everybody rolls for all of the stuff that has been uh, destroyed and the problem with that is at the beginning we were killing them so they had a ton of stuff um, destroyed and we didn't really have any so their value is a lot higher fortunately for the sake of the game nobody got revived um, which was very very nice so um, yeah so anyway thanks for watching guys if you enjoyed this uh, Herescape battle report as well as with the map um, please let me know in the comments below I definitely uh, this is my roots of my channel and uh, this is when um, I enjoyed YouTube the most, I'd say. So, 
Um, I'm going to be continuing doing these along with some maybe uh, Rocket League videos or something something that I'm enjoying at the moment. Uh, I'm not really sure, but definitely some more HeroScape videos as I can do them. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys, um, and I will see you in the next video. All right, peace.